All right, for this lesson, we're gonna be adding and subtracting rational numbers. Most of this will be adding and subtracting either decimals or fractions or whole numbers or some combination of the three. So the key idea you were supposed to write down says to add or subtract rational numbers, use the same rules for signs as you use for integers. For example, if I have four fifths minus one fifth, the bottom number stays the same, the denominator stays the same, and I just subtract four minus one to get three on top. If I were to do negative one over three, this you guys should have already written in your journals, plus one six, the first thing you have to do is get a common denominator because you're adding. So how do I change the one third? Uh, multiply by two. Multiply everything times two. So I'm gonna get negative two over six plus one over six. The denominator stays the same. What's negative two plus one? That's three. No, negative two. Oh, one. So it'd be a negative one sixth. The signs are super important during this lesson, guys. All right, so let's do an example in your journals. Write this down. We're going to solve negative 8 over 3 plus 5 over 6. What is my first step? You need to have a common denominator. You must have a common denominator. What can we do to this first equation to give it? Uh, multiply. multiply everything over here times what? 2. 2, because that will give us 6 on the bottom. So I have 8 times 2, which is? 16. And 3 times 2? 6 which is what I want to get, so then I just rewrite the second equation. So the denominator stays the same, so I put a 6. What is a negative 16 plus 5? Uh, negative 11. Negative 11. Does everybody agree with Abraham? Yes. Yeah. He is correct. Now to simplify this, I need to put it into mixed. So negative 6 goes into 11 one time. And how many is left over? Very good, 5 are left over. So my answer is 1 and 5 sixths. Yes, thank you. Negative 1 and 5 sixths. Good. Good job. Any questions on how to do that? No? Wait till everybody has it before I move on. All right, example 2. Put this in your journals. We have negative 4.05 plus 7.62. So what's the first thing you probably want to do here? Uh, put it like in, uh, yes, put it in vertical format. Line it up. Now, I'm going to teach you my little trick. Normally it doesn't really matter when you're adding, right? You can put one on top and one on the other. However, this one's a negative number. So could I not just put it underneath here and then instead of adding, I subtract because it's a negative number? Yes, and and that makes it a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, what? So because the see the sign is addition, mm -hmm. so normally it doesn't matter which, you just line them up, doesn't matter which number's on top, but since this one's a negative, I can put it on the bottom and actually subtract instead of adding, which, three, which is a whole lot faster than doing it though. Yep. You just have to add a so we're going to borrow, we just subtract instead. What's 12 minus 5? 12 minus 7. 5 minus 0. 7 minus 4, three. 3. Now, this will only work if this number is smaller. You know that. Well, it will still work if it's bigger. It's just harder because you're going to go into the negative numbers. Okay, bring the decimal straight down. So my answer is 3.57. Any questions? All right, grab your paper on your own number 1. Negative 7 over 8 plus 1 over 4. What's the first step? Get a common denominator. Which would be multiply this side times what? 2. So I'd get negative 7 over 8 plus 2 over 8. <laughs> bless you, bless you. So the denominator stays the same. What's negative 7 plus 2? What kind of five? Negative five? A negative five.
Does everybody agree? Mm. Hope so, because it's right. All right, let's look at number two. While I throw my little stylus. Thank you, Abraham. And I realized it's bigger, so I'm going to go to the next page. Negative 6 and 1 thirds plus 20 over 3. Do these have the same denominator? Yes. Yes. yes, but we still need to do something. We need to change it up. We need to change it into a mixed number. We need to make it improper. So we're going to multiply 6 times 3 and then add 1. Very good. So I have a negative 19 over 3 plus 20 over 3. Now that makes it very simple, right? What's negative 19 plus 20? Oh, uh, it's negative 1. I mean 1. Yeah, because the 20 is positive and the 19 is negative. Good. Shh. All right, do number 3. We have 2 plus... Negative seven halves. Okay, when you have a negative right next to a positive, which one of those wins? The negative. So I could write this as two minus seven over two, and it would still be the same. Now, how can I do this subtraction? Uh, you need to put a one under the Make that a whole number. Very good. Now I need to find a. What, what, what are you making a whole number? The the two over one. The two becomes two over one to make it a fraction. I said the wrong thing. Good call. You're making the whole number a fraction so that you can subtract. So I got to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side times two. So four over two. Four you over two. Whole you just add Put a one under the bottom. And then you can make it a common denominator. Okay. Yeah. Any whole number is over an imaginary one. Mm -hmm. So what is four minus seven? Uh, is it going into negative? It will be negative. Uh, negative three. Now, to simplify this, one. I make it mix. So 2 goes into 3 one time with how many left over? One. Very good. Number 4. Negative 12.5 plus 15.3. Okay, we have the same phenomenon that we had last time. So I can say minus 12.5 over here since this is smaller. So, let's subtract. Borrow, this is 4. 13 minus 5 is what? 4 minus 2. 2. 1 minus 1. Zero. Where do I put the decimal? Uh, Bring it straight down, very good. 2.8. All right, number 5. Negative 8.15 plus a negative 4.3. So we're adding two negatives, so the answer is going to go further negative. So really, I can just add these two and then throw a negative in front of it. Right? Yeah. Yep, to make the addition. What's 8 plus 4? And then just don't forget that it's in the negative zone, so we put the negative in front, and there's your answer. Okay, that's only when you're adding the same signs, guys. So it's a negative plus a negative, so it's going to go further negative. You could also, if, I, if they wrote it this way, it's still the same thing. Because remember, you have this plus and minus next to each other. So it's still gonna your answer is still gonna be a negative number. Make sense? Yeah. Alright. Let's do number six. So we have zero point six five plus negative two point seven five. Alright. Here's another tricky one. So the negative number is bigger in this case. So it's still going to be a negative number for your answer, but we're going to go closer to zero by 0.65. So I'm going to say 
2.75 and I'm going to subtract 6.5, but then I'm going to remember that my answer is negative because negative is bigger. But since this is positive, it's, you know, if I had the number line here and I was at negative 2.75, adding 0.65 just goes this direction. So let's subtract it from here. I get 0, 7 minus 6 is 1, 2. So I'm left over with 210, but I'm still in the negative side of the 0. Does that make sense how I did that? It's the easiest way I know to handle negatives and positives combining. All right, go to example two. Nope, example three. Put this in your journals. Ah, we're going to deal with some mixed fractions. We can handle it. Okay, first thing, when you see a negative next to a negative, what does that mean? Positive. We can change it to be a positive. So, and then I need to do what to this first number? Um, yeah, make it improper. Seven times four is plus one. So we have negative 29 over 7. We're changing this to a positive 6 over 7. Do I have a common denominator? Yes, yes I do. So now I have a negative 29 plus 6. So I'm going to go back towards the 0. So it's going to be negative what? Other way. This is, this is a positive, this is a negative, so it's kind of like you're saying 29 minus 6 and then put a negative in front of it. Negative 23. So now we go back into mixed, which you get negative. How many times can 7 go into 23? Three. Three big times. I'm left with how many? Uh, two. So negative 3 and 2 over 7. That's the answer. Easy peasy, right? Any questions? Did I go too fast on that? Uh, what's this estimating thing? I. All right. Let's do on your own. Here we go. Already. Number seven. One third minus a negative one third. Oh, we have a negative and a negative right next. So that's going to make this. Where's my markers? So I can change it to one third plus one third. Two thirds. All right, eight. Yes. Number eight is negative three and one third minus five. Six. Yeah, multiply and then add one. Yes, so we gotta make this improper. Three times three Nine. plus one. Okay, what else do I have to do? Common denominator. Y'all are getting loud over there. Common denominator. So what do I have to do to this side? Three times two. So I get. Oh, twenty over six. Very good. Minus five over six. All right, so the denominator stays the same. Now you see it's a minus 20 and it's going further negative. So I'm actually adding those two numbers, which would be negative 25. Negative 25. See here, because it's a negative 20 minus 5. Mm -hmm. So on the number line, I'm here at negative 20. But don't we have to turn that into a mixed fraction? We do. I was just making sure people understood why I went to the left. All right, so how many times can 6 go into 25? Four. Which is how many left over? One over six. And then make sure you have the negative in front. Very good. I think you all got the hang of it. You didn't even let me finish talking. You're like, I know the answer. Go. Did everybody got it? Yep. All right. Oh, we have another one. Number nine. Four and one half minus five and one fourth. Oh, we got lots of steps here. First step. <laughs> Make improper. Four times two is Eight. plus one. Nine. Five times four is twenty. Plus one. Over. Two. Good try. Four. Four. 
Now we have to. Uh, so we're going to do. Eight times two, 18 over four. Minus. 20. Now you notice 18 is first, so my answer is going to be what? Because the 18 is smaller than the 21. So what is? Negative three. Negative three. Oh, yeah. Yes. And in your head, the easy way to do this, for those of you who are not doing it in your head, if you know what the answer is going to be a negative number because this is smaller, I just count up to 21. So I go 18, 19, 20, 21. So that's why I know it's 3. It's a fast way to do it. When it's smaller numbers, when they get to be like hundreds, it's, it's a lot harder. So your answer is negative 3 fourths. Any questions? Last example. All right. Ooh, I gotta take a picture. All right. So we have a bridge, a tunnel, and in the water, the bottom of the boat is two point one feet below the surface and the top of the boat is 8.7 feet above it. Toward towed on a trailer the bottom of the boat is 1.3 feet off the ground. Can the boat and trailer pass under this bridge? I am super visual so we've talked about a boat right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna draw a boat and it said the water is right here all right, so our water, it said on the bridge, it said the boat was, I got distracted, here we go. The bottom of the boat is 2.1 feet, so from here to here is 2.1 below the surface. The top of the boat, from here to the top of the boat, is 8.7 feet. And then when they put the boat on a trailer, this is a fantastic trailer. He has a smaller mast on the trailer. <laughs> but all we need is the height of the trailer. This says that he is how far off the ground? 1.3. All right, so now I have all my visuals because word problems makes it a whole lot easier if you can draw a picture. And it says, can the boat and the trailer pass under the bridge? Well, how tall is this bridge? 11.8. So we have to figure out if all three of these equal 11 or, or less than 11 feet 8 inches. So first we got to find the height of the boat. Height of the boat is... Mm -hmm. So we're going to add 8.7 and 2.1. Now if you were using sea level, which is what they did in here, you can see they wrote above sea level it was plus 8.7. Below sea, sea level it was down 2.1. So negative but I know they're, this is just showing you how they made the algebra. So in order to add the total height of the boat together, you say subtract this, which means you're actually adding it. Which is why I draw a picture, because then I can ignore the fact that it's sea level. I can just say 8.7 plus 2.2 .2 is what? It should be 2.1. My bad. Which is 10.8. Yes, he did. Now, how tall is the trailer? So plus 1.3. What's 10.8 plus 1.3? So 12.1. So is that going to be bigger than 11.8? Should the boat go under this bridge? No. No. He is not going to fit. <laughs> well, let's see that. Yeah, they could if it was. See, some of the boats don't have a sail. That's just the only one I know how to draw. <laughs> so it could have taken off the cabin roof. All right, for number 10, we are going to use this example. So I'm going to leave it on this screen for just a second. On example four, the clearance of the bridge is now 12 feet 1 inch. Can the boat and trailer pass under the bridge? 12 foot 1 inch. No. It's exactly the same. 
So it would probably break my poor little flag off. So number 12 is still a no. I need at least one more inch to try under going under this bridge. Yep, yeah, I'd still, I'd break my flag and I don't want to break my cool little flag. All right, any you need to do IXLH4. It's actually a lot simpler than what we did in the lesson, so you'll knock it out real quick, which probably means tomorrow is just an IXL.